Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world, and you, individual. Today, I would like to speak about making your inner world independent of your physical body, or making your ego or your I the leader of your all of your bodies. That means when you are here in the present moment you can become aware of your own thinking your own feeling and your own willing to a certain degree you are completely conscious of your thoughts but you're only dreaming in your feelings they are more like hazy outlines and sensations and then you have the will which we are completely sleeping to. These are three of the things you can become aware of with your ego. Your ego is kind of the shining light on these things to become aware of them. Bring it in, bring in, bringing it into consciousness. So when you are sitting here in the present moment, you can become aware of what is an inflowing impulse of thoughts and thereby also feelings. These thoughts also might, brings, might bring us into action if we are ruminating on something long enough. With your thoughts, if we grab a hold of our thoughts to a certain degree and focus on specific areas of life we can thereby also be become participating with our emotions and our will too of course it requires a lot of practice and training and trying and try and fa uh, try and error because we are more or less trying and failing see what fits see what sticks and see what doesn't. What doesn't falls away automatically because it is not sustainable in action, but what works and what can be integrated and absorbed and used for physical living in relation to social interactions and life to enhance and deepen and expand it is the correct way and a very helpful way to see the world from to see the world from the inside and experiencing it inside out spreading ourselves out and the more we do so the more second nature it becomes just like learning the alphabet or just like learning math once you have learned it and have cultivated and stimulated it enough it has become its own organ for perception of this, for using this. It's the same with spirituality and inner development. The more you do it, the more you inv invest time, energy, focus on the spiritual work, on growth, on evolution, on understanding and study of reality. The more you deepen and make it second nature, where it becomes reality, a direct influx of inspiration. This inspiration is invaluable because that is where you get your new ideas, new ways, new seeds that you might contemplate and reflect upon to make, to, to make new loving, caring actions. Every day we experiment and try to explore these things. We want to be loving and caring, not cold and distant, de detached. A certain detachment is necessary, but not so much so that you lose yourself away to yourself and not become so overly involved that we lose ourselves to the involvement but it is a golden middle point where we 
have both of those in balance. We do not lose ourselves to the world and we do not lose ourselves to ourselves away from the world. We are always participating and steadily and patiently sharing what, you, what we find out about. We are scientists in that way. We are experimenting. But we are using the same way scientists are thinking. The accuracy, the directness, the individualization, the, the diversification and details. But we use it for our inner development and understanding the inner workings, the metaphysical or spiritual workings of a human being.